Okay, so to answer this question, we need to do a few things. First, we obviously need to know where Seattle, Washington, and Miami, Florida are. I'm going to circle them on this top graph, but if you're not sure, you can always look up on a map, on the internet, you know, your favorite book, something like that. So I've circled Seattle, Washington, and Miami, Florida in black circles there. And so now we want to calculate what the actual temperature at both Seattle and Miami was on June 27th, 2021. And the two graphs we have here are on the top, the average climatological surface temperature on June 27th. So again, what we've done here is we've averaged this over a long time period and said, this is the temperature that we would expect to see over many, many June 27ths. And on the bottom, we have the anomaly that was actually observed on June 27th, 2021. And we know from our text that our observed air temperature is just the sum of our climatological temperature. Meteorologists and climatologists sometimes refer to this as climo as shorthand, plus our anomaly, which is sometimes abbreviated anom. So let's start with Seattle first. So if we look at Seattle's climatology, we see that it lies somewhere between this contour line and this contour line, which represent 14 degrees Celsius and 17 degrees Celsius. There's actually not a 17 label here, but you could always look down here, or you could say here's 20, here's 14, we're going by threes, so the one that's in between 20 and 14 is 17. So let's estimate that the climatological temperature in Seattle is 15 degrees Celsius. We then go down to our bottom plot and look at what the anomaly was that was observed on that day. So again, I'm just going to circle Seattle here, and I'm going to estimate that number to be around 12 Celsius. So again, same thing. Here's my six contour. Here's my nine contour. Seattle looks like it's pretty much lying right along this contour right here, which if we go by threes would be 12. So now if I just add these two together, pretty straightforward, I get 27 degrees Celsius. And I can go ahead and convert that to Fahrenheit. I know from uh, our notes that converting to Fahrenheit just means I have to take what is in Celsius, I have to multiply it by five nine fifths, and then I have to add 32 to it. And in this case, that will give me approximately 81 degrees Fahrenheit in Seattle. Now, I've chosen this date for a very specific reason. This was during the 2021 Pacific Northwest heat wave where temperatures were much, much, much warmer than had previously been seen in some of these areas in the Pacific Northwest. Now you might think, 81 degrees Fahrenheit, that is pretty roasty, but it's not overly hot. So one thing I wanna point out is that these temperatures that I'm showing you here are the daily average. So they include temperatures that you would see both during the day when the sun is up, as well as at night when the sun is down. So even though the average temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit, this is the average over that entire 24 hour period. And many of these regions in the Pacific Northwest actually experienced high temperatures greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit during this heat wave. So let's just check out Miami. So if we go down to Miami, I've circled this now here in the uh, lower right corner. It's a little tough to tell, but it is somewhere in this orange bin. And so this orange contour is somewhere between 26 and 29. Let's just say that it's around 28 degrees Celsius. That is the average temperature in Miami on June 27th. And if I go down here, I see that the anomaly is actually straddling this line that kind of goes between light blue and light red. And if I look really closely, I see that that contour represents zero. So 
Miami on this day was actually experiencing temperatures that are pretty much right on its climatological average for this day. So if I go back to our formula up here, I see observations equals climo plus anom. Our climo is 28 degrees Celsius, and our anomaly is zero degrees Celsius. So the observed temperature in Miami is just 28 plus zero, or 28 degrees Celsius. And I can use my formula where I take 28, multiply it by nine fifths, and then add 32 to get Fahrenheit. And this equals approximately 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So on this particular day, when Seattle was experiencing some of its warmest weather in, rec in its recorded history at 81 degrees Fahrenheit for a daily mean, Miami was experiencing a pretty average day, which was around the same temperature. But one thing we're going to see as we go through this class is that it's not necessarily the absolute temperature that we're concerned with, but how regions and areas are conditioned to deal with that temperature. Individuals and infrastructure in Seattle are much less equipped to handle temperatures of 81, 82 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of a summer day. Just like Atlanta, Georgia, for example, would be very ill-equipped to handle a foot of snow in the middle of winter relative to a northeastern city such as Boston.